Skittles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. Uh, <laughs> this is a 3D print of a house. Uh, it's a failed 3D print. Um, well, I call it a failed print, it's a, a semi-failed print. Uh, basically what happened when I was printing this, uh, it was on the build plate, it was also printing the door behind it. And what happened was the uh, extruder fan cooling duct came loose and it knocked the door over so it was trying to print in midair which it can't do and basically what it's done I don't know if you can see but it's left all these stringy bits all over it uh, I could have cleaned it up to be fair but it was easier just to print another one um, so you know me I never throw anything away I decided to make use of this and there was a picture came up on Facebook the other day of a, uh, a derelict cottage uh, in Ireland somewhere, I think it was in Kerry or somewhere like that. Absolutely beautiful picture. And I thought what I would do is I would make something like that using this. So, that's what we're going to do. So, for the base of our little diorama, vignette, whatever you call it, I've got these. Um, these are a couple of uh, circular pieces of half inch MDF I cut out and they're cut to very specific dimensions because I'm going to basically put uh, a bell jar over the top of this and the bell jar that I have, it's one that I bought cheap and the reason it was cheap is because it didn't have a base so I've made this base um, to, for the jar to go over and the little cottage will sit basically like, well, <laughs> not like that, like that um, so it's going to be quite a small diorama so the first step is a primer coat which I'm going to use this Chaos Black I found it works very well on these uh, 3D prints so I'll do that outside because basically it stinks if you spray it in here so right so that's the uh, primer coat on uh, what I'm going to do now is start painting the uh, the house um, now because this is old there's going to be a lot of grey in it um, like the wood everything will have gone grey so I think what I'm going to do to start with is give the whole thing a good dry brush with uh, grey and then uh, we can start adding some extra colours afterwards so this is some grey that I mixed up for a previous project it's just basically 50-50 black and white acrylic um, so we'll get some of this and go over the whole thing so a few people have uh, suggested that they might like a voiceover instead of subtitles so I'm going to give it a go on this video and, and see how it works out so if you have a preference one way or the other it's uh, be interesting to get some feedback in the comments uh, anyway, as far as this goes, it's basically just a question of uh, a straightforward dry brush, uh, a mix of black and white to make grey, obviously, and just give the whole thing a good going over um, before we put the colour coats on. Right, so there's our first coat of grey. Uh, what we'll do is we'll let this dry and then we'll start adding some other colours. Right, so I've got a selection of uh, various earth tones here, uh, raw umber, burnt umber, raw sienna and yellow ochre and I use a combination of these to uh, kind of brighten it up a little bit. So what I'm doing now is going over the uh, wooden parts with a fairly heavy dry brush of the raw sienna and uh, this is basically the the first step in creating our wood effect. It's a very simple uh, process. Now once that's been on, it, it barely needs to be dry. I put it on straight away afterwards, but I'm now going back over it with a lighter dry brush of the yellow ochre. And what that does is just picks out some of the highlights and makes it look a little bit more um, woody. And now here, what I'm doing is, now I've got a better look of what's going on, is uh, going back over and... Uh, colouring in some of the, the stones, the flagstones and so forth um, just to give them a bit more definition uh, just to make the whole thing look a bit more realistic so now I'm going to go over the, uh, the, the plaster bits of the walls with this um, XF55 deck tan 
So as you can see here, uh, it's one of the benefits of the black primer is you can fill in fills like this without having to get right up to the edges and it creates sort of natural shadows um, in around the beams and the corners and so on and forth. Uh, this basically saves you a huge amount of time and effort as you're going along because you don't have to create those shadows yourself. All right, there we go. So what we're going to do now is apply some uh, washes and other effects just to tone it all down again. Now when we uh, obviously do the in interior, we're going to go over this floor again. There'll be virtually none of it visible, but it's just, uh, just to make sure that there's nothing left to chance, as it were. So this is um, burnt umber, fairly heavy wash, uh, but it will actually settle down into the grooves and uh, make the floor look filthy, basically. So yes, this is uh, basically just to make sure that if there's any of the floor left visible once we've finished, uh, it won't look too obvious. Now we're going to go back to our burnt sienna and make a little wash with this. And what we're going to do with that is go round the edges of the walls to make the plaster look yellowed. Yeah, so here I'm just going around the edges of the walls uh, and making sure that afterwards I blend it in just to make the edges of the plaster look uh, like old and yellowed. Now what I'm doing is going over pretty much the whole thing with a mix of the raw and the burnt sienna, uh, umber rather, um, just to make it look a bit grimy. And, and try and sort of unify the colours a little bit. Now, while I'm just doing this, uh, I just wanted to mention that pretty much all of the paints and the brushes that I've got, and certainly all the ones I'm using here, came from uh, Hobbycraft. Uh, if you keep an eye out in there, they quite often have sales and you can pick a lot of this stuff up very cheap. So, uh, yeah, you don't need to spend a fortune on stuff. All right. Now we'll just leave that to dry. Right, so while that's drying, we're going to try that experiment. This is um, sisal uh, in two forms. Um, these are just the fibres. And sisal comes from a plant. It's a plant fibre. Um, comes from the sisal plant, funnily enough. Uh, I've got some here in two forms. This one I got from Hobbycraft. Uh, and it's just the actual fibres. And this is... Um, sizal rope by the spectacularly named Grunt. <laughs> um, so yeah, sizal. It's uh, as I say, it's a plant fibre. The the interesting thing about sizal, as a, as a little aside, is um, it's used a lot in recyclable packaging. And the irony of that is there are swathes of rainforest that have been cut down. <laughs> to plant sisal crops in order to feed the West's uh, desire for recyclable packaging. So there's an irony there, isn't there? Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, we're going to have a go at making some ivy. Okay. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this rope, I'm going to use some of this, and I'm going to, half it I'm going to dye it green, or try and dye it green. And the other half I'm just going to leave like this. So let's take some of this out of the package and we'll see if we can dye it first. Right, so I've got some out of the packaging, um, which was interesting. Uh, so let's say these are the natural fibres and this is the, uh, the rope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this and some of this and I'm going to try and dye it with some ink. Now, this is the ink that I have. Um, it's De La Roni Sap Green uh, acrylic ink. And I've got a little pot here. It's uh, from Sainsbury's, funnily enough. Um, and I'm going to put some of this in here with a bit of water. And I'm going to put some of this in it and leave it and see if it takes the dye. Right, so, this is going to be easier said than done, I think. Uh, right, let's put that in there, like that. 
I have to say this is very strong stuff. I mean, it's like these strands, you can't... You have to give them a good, you know, thing to break them. They're very strong. Right, let's tuck that in on the top there like that. And that will hold it down. Shouldn't shake ink, really, because it makes it all foamy. Um, yeah, I suppose in theory you could do this with uh, food colouring as well. Might be a bit cheaper. Uh never actually tried it. I might give it a go one day and uh, see how it works. I've got some green food colouring somewhere in the kitchen. I'll have to dig it out and uh, give it a go. Right. Now we'll add some water. There we go. And this might need... I might put a bit more ink in there. It doesn't seem a very strong mix. Try and mix it up a little bit. And we'll leave that in there overnight and see if it takes a, takes the stain. Okay, so I've got a bit more out while that's uh, soaking, and I'm gonna try um, as I say this trying this without the uh, without the ink. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unthread this rope a bit. Um, Basically, the way it's made up, there are three twisted strands, uh, and there are three of those, and then they're twisted together to make the rope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unravel them as much as I can. I'm just get that bit out of the way for a minute because that's just not helping. And Oh, just talk about yourselves for a minute. And then I'll unravel this as well. Should have used a short bit of rope, really, shouldn't I? <laughs> uh. da -da 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 Right, let's put that to one side for a minute. And then, now I've got this individual strand, I'm gonna pull it apart, like this, you see, and make it all nice and fibrous. I think that'll do us for now. So, like that. Oh, just get rid of some of that. Oh, cool, blimey. Um, and I've got some of our natural size all strands as well and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make them into ivy vines now to do that we need two things green tea <laughs> uh, what I did was I bought a uh, a box of cheap green tea leaves uh, I think there was like a hundred or something in the in the box and I cut them open and I poured all the leaves into this pot so we've got that what we've also got is this this is spray adhesive now there's all kinds of spray adhesives you can get um, I think this is the best one, personally, the best one I've found. I've been searching for ages to find one that actually comes out as a, a mist rather than like silly string. And this is the only one I've found that does it. If you can find one, a, a cheaper one, by all means use it. This is expensive. This is like, I think this tin was 15 or 16 pounds. But what we're going to do is we're going to spray some of this on our fibres 
and then we're going to put the green tea on it to act as leaves. So I'm going to put some gloves on to do this because I do not want to get this stuff on my hands, um, mainly because it's a bugger to get off. So I'll go and do that. So yes, I'm going to spray this uh, onto the fibres and then I am going to put the tea leaves on. So I'm going to do this outside, spray this because it's I don't want it sprayed in here. Back in a sec. Okay, so I've sprayed that on there now and we take our tea leaves and we're just going to sprinkle them all over try and get as much on it as I can. Now obviously you can buy vine leaves, um, people like Knock and that make them, I've seen some really nice ones, but they tend to be quite expensive and they're also sometimes quite difficult to get hold of. Um, I was trying to get some before for another project and um, I couldn't find them anywhere. I think the only place I could find them was like Czechoslovakia or somewhere and they had like a six week delivery period. So I thought I'd try this instead. So we'll do both sides. And I think what I might do is, once I've put some of this on here, is I might give it another spray and do it again. Yeah. Let's give that another spray and do it again. Next to our wearing gloves. <laughs> well, I think it looks pretty good. Right, let's put this somewhere carefully to dry and we'll try the other one. <laughs> Stuck to it. Yeah. Right, let's see what this one does goes like. So while I'm doing this, uh, what I've actually done is I've set up almost like a little spray booth uh, in the workshop. Um, it's very simple. It's basically just a cardboard box uh, with a, a little vent running out of the door. And what that meant, I found it a lot easier for doing this because I could spray the glue and then put the stuff straight on. And I found doing this, it stuck a, a lot better than it did before. So if you can do this kind of thing, it's worth considering. One slight issue with this uh, 3M glue is it has a very, very short working time. It's like 30 seconds or something. That's not bad, is it? I think I'll give that another spritz as well, hang on. stick to my finger yeah so um, as I just mentioned it's uh, it's useful to have somewhere to spray because this stuff dries very very quickly so it's something to keep in mind if you're using this type of glue see this seems to have clumped up a bit more um, still looks good but I think you know it, it gives us options that's the main thing uh, right let's put these to one side let them dry off for a bit and uh, see what they look like. Right, so our house is nice and dry now and looking pretty good, I have to say. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is mount it on the base. So it's going to go basically like that, more or less. And I want to kind of blend this into the base. So I've got a few things to do that. First I've got a little pot to mix everything in. Modelling paste, some raw umber to give us a nice dirt colour. This is tile grout. 
and I've got some sand and some mixed herbs. You can buy these mixed herbs in big tubs from supermarkets um, and they look really good. I mean that really does look like leaf litter and ground scatter uh, and it smells nice too. So what we're going to do is mix all of this up in our little pot and use that to basically cover the base of the diorama. I'll start that modelling paste, good glob of this. That's probably way too much but it doesn't matter. A good dollop of paint to colour it. Some of our tile grout for a bit of texture. This stuff is really fine powder and it goes everywhere, so go careful with that. Some sand. And our mixed herbs. Yeah, if you're wondering about the sigh, that's uh, the neighbour's dog barking. It's an annoying, yappy little thing, and it barks so much that my parrot has started copying it. I kid you not. Which is so much fun, so thanks for that, yeah. Right, now we've got that all mixed up and looking nice and gloopy, we can put it on the base of our model. So, what I've done is I've just super glued this down, just so that it doesn't move about. And now we'll put this all round and some inside as well uh, and give us a nice grungy floor. So here I'm just spreading our little uh, mud mess around with a, a coffee stirrer. Um, which are a lot cheaper than lolly sticks by the way and just basically working around the whole base uh, giving us a nice uh, transition between the model and the base a um, bit thicker in places a bit thinner in others and so on and so forth um, and as I said before I'm actually covering up the vast majority of the floor but it's always worth doing the floor just in case right so that's that. Now what I want to do before this dries is I might put some stones on it. So let's see what I've got. So I've got two pots of stones here. These ones are uh, more sort of pebbles and things. Um, basically to get these, get a handful of gravel and just sort through it and find out the round stones. And here These are granite chips. They use them, they're called road scalpings. They use them for surfacing roads. Um, they did the roads around here a few months ago and there were piles of this stuff that they left. So I just grabbed a couple of handfuls. Um, so I'm gonna put some of these around the building just to make it look a bit more. So if you remember from our reference picture, uh, the building had a lot of stones sort of scattered around it. And um, some of them were obviously, you know, the, where the walls had collapsed and others, I don't know where they came from, but I'm going to try and replicate the same thing here. I'm just putting some on the base. I mean, I'm going to put more on afterwards, but this is so they'll stick to the base. I want them to look like they've been there for a long time, like they've kind of sunk into the ground a bit. And these granite chips are more to look like where the walls collapsed. And the reason for these ones is because I'm going to have a tree inside and uh, I want it to look like the tree's grown up through the floor. So again, I'm just going to put these on just to start with 
I'll put more on afterwards, but it's just to give us uh, a rough idea of where the tree is going to go. Right, now we'll uh, just leave this to dry. So while this is drying, I'm going to start working on the tree that's going to come out the middle. So this is a piece of uh, tree that I found. Um, I'm not sure what kind of tree it is actually. But anyway, um, so this is kind of fairly close to what I want, but it's a bit big. So what I'm going to do is, is shorten some of these branches a little bit and then make it a bit more tree-like. So I'll cut these down, shorten them, and then we'll uh, look at adding some foliage and things. Right, so I've cut this down into uh, basically three big pieces and I'm going to use probably all of them. Um, certainly this one, probably this one as well, maybe this one. Now to make them more uh, tree-like I've got something uh, that's quite useful. This is uh, sea foam grass and it has this amazing like tree-like structure to it and basically what you do is just snip bits of this off and stick them onto the branches and make a tree. So that's what we'll do now. So here I'm just using some clippers to uh, cut bits off. Some people use the whole uh, grass but it's, it's a lot cheaper, it goes a lot further if you do it this way. Right, so to attach these sea foam pieces to the tree, I'm just using super glue. And what you do is just put a nice amount of super glue where you want your your limb to be, your branch or whatever. Take your piece of sea foam. This is a super glue accelerant. Put a bit of that on. There you go. Right, this might take a while, so just talk about yourselves. So, as I mentioned before, one of the uh, useful ways of using this is to is to cut bits off and stick them onto an armature like this. Um, some people do use, you know, like entire sprigs or tufts or whatever of sea foam, but it is actually quite expensive to buy and this will make it go a lot further and I think gives you better results. Um, but obviously it's up to you how you want to do it, but this is how I do it and I think it works very well. Right, so we've got our trees here um, that are ready to be painted and have some foliage attached, but before I do that I've got some other bits that I'm going to use. This is um, uh, moss. <laughs> That's the box suggests. Uh, this came from Hobbycraft, they had this on sale, it was ridiculously cheap. But basically it's a box of dried moss. Um, so I'm going to use some bits of this to make some little bushes and things. So I'll paint this up at the same time. So to paint our trees and bushes and whatnot, I'm going to uh, give them a bit of flat brown to start with and then, yes, you guessed it, a bit of <laughs> RAF dark green too. So to start the treatment of our bushes and trees, uh, I'm giving them a quick going over with the uh, flat brown uh, just to try and unify the colours a bit, get them all looking the same. Um, this moss is a bit tricky to paint actually, it has a tendency to uh, <laughs> fall apart as you're painting it, so you have to be quite careful with it. Uh, same deal for the trees. Uh, the main thing here is to kind of unify the colours uh, because basically we've got the, the colour of the wood, we've got the, the sea foam which is a much lighter colour and you do also get blobs of glue. So by giving it all a good coat of brown it unifies all the colours. So here's our tree all brown and now we'll just give it a little dash of green just to uh, break it up a little bit. There you go, see we don't want to go mad with it, just a, a little a little hint here and there just to uh, break up the brown.
Oh, that doesn't look too bad, does it? So, same as before, we'll give this uh, a spritz of our uh, spray glue and then hit it with the uh, green tea. So, as I did with the uh, the vines, I've basically given this a quick spritz of the Super 77 and then just sprinkle the green tea leaves all over it. Not a bad little bush, is it? Right, now I'm going to do the same thing with the tree. Um, it's had a little spray of the Super 77 and then just sprinkle the, the leaves all over it. Um, you will get some on the branches and on the trunk and things like that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it, ju it just adds to the effect, makes it look a bit like moss or lichen or anything like that. So, yeah, don't worry about being too precious about this. Just put it on so it gives it good coverage. All right, there's our tree, or one of our trees. Now, because I don't want all of the bushes and that to be look the same, I'm going to use some of these uh, mixed herbs as well on some of the other bushes just to for a bit of variety. Um, these mixed herbs are actually very good for this sort of thing, and they're very cheap. Uh, this big pot was about three pounds fifty from Costco. They smell nice as well. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of these on one of the trees as well, just to liven it up a bit. Not a lot, just a little sprinkle, just for a bit of uh, variety. There we go. Yeah, quite pleased with those. Right, so while we're waiting for the trees to dry, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, static grass around this in, in tufts and patches. Uh, I don't want to cover the whole thing, but I'm going to put a fair amount on, basically in between the stones and everything. And there's also going to be quite a lot of moss and stuff as well, but we'll start with the static grass. So what I've got here is some um, static grass, 4mm moss green. I've also got some 2mm, but I'm going to put the 4mm on first, and then I'll put some 2mm on around to just kind of, you know, for a bit of variety. To put it on, I'm going to use one of my static grass applicators that I made. Um, there are various videos of me making these. I actually made three of them in the finish. Um, but this is quite a small one, so this would be quite handy for, for little areas like this. So we'll load up the static grass applicator and put some grass on. So I've put uh, some Mod Podge on. Turn on the static grass applicator. One of the um, issues with the smaller applicators that I made is they have a smaller uh, 6 kilovolt uh, static field generator on them and they're not massively effective sometimes so you have to get quite close for them to work. Uh, the bigger applicator I made has a, a 20,000 volt or 20 kilovolt applicator and that works much much better. So while this one is good for small spaces it is a little bit awkward as you have to get very close to the surface. I think what I might do actually is prop this up. It might work a bit better. It's quite difficult to get into the corners. Uh, here I'm just going to use the applicator, just run it over the surface and let the static pull the grass upright. Right, that will do for now. Let's just get that out of the way for a second. Ah. 
Some of these stones are going to fall off, but that's okay. Because we can put them back on afterwards. There we go. And we'll go around and do the rest of it. And as before here, I'm just applying the, uh, the Mod Podge around the stones where I want the grass to be. Um, obviously you can use any, any kind, you know, PVA or anything will do. I use the Mod Podge because I have quite a lot of it in the workshop uh, and it works very well for this sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so this is basically fairly standard, applying the, the static grass um, until we get a nice good coverage all over the areas that we want. And then we can move on to the next bit. Hmm. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, let's put a little bit of two mil on as well, I think, just to uh, for a bit of variety. So here I'm applying the two millimeter meadow grass, exactly the same as before. Uh, the glue is still wet, so I can use the same glue. And the two mil will get in between the four mil and give us a nice variety um, and a lot more coverage as well. Um, when the glue dries, uh, it will go clear. So where you can see the white through the grass, that will eventually disappear. Right, I think that'll do. Now let's put some other things on as well. Right, now if you remember, our, our reference picture is very mossy and green. So I'm going to put some of this... Uh, Woodland Scenics blended turf on, green blend, must have been up all night thinking that one up. Uh, I'm going to put quite a lot of this on. I've also got some Woodland Scenics clump foliage in light green and uh, bushes in medium green. It's the same stuff, it's just a slightly different colour. Um, I've got a few other bits I'm going to put on as well. Uh, I don't have any affiliation with Woodland Scenics but their stuff's just easy to use. So we'll start with some of this and then we'll move on and put some of the other things on. Right, I like to apply this out of a little pot. I find it's a lot easier than messing about with the bag, so I tip it out into little pots and use it. So we're going to do the same thing as before. Just put this on its edge, and we'll just sprinkle this over the grass to start with. And like I said, we want quite a lot of it. And try and also cover the patches where the grass isn't, if that makes sense. Because the thing is, when I put the, the scenery glue on, this stuff will kind of sink in and dissipate a little bit. So I want this more kind of moss than grass, if that makes sense. Uh, do excuse my hand getting in the way a lot while I'm doing this. I probably should have used the uh, the point of view camera to film this part, but um, hopefully you're getting a, an idea of what I'm doing. Basically, just covering all of the bare bits and the grass with our uh, with our blended turf to give us a nice mossy appearance. So that'll do for that. I'm also going to put some more of our mixed herbs on. But I'm going to try and get it like down into the corners and that to, uh, to look like sort of built up leaf litter. And uh, yeah, here I'm just using a little pallet knife to, uh, to push this into the corners, get it right up into the edges and kind of bank it up a little bit to make it look like uh, leaf litter. And now I'm going to sprinkle a little bit, just around generally, just a little bit. Again, just to kind of break everything up a bit. Don't want masses of it, just a little bit. Because the other thing to remember is that our trees are going to be in here, so there'll be quite a lot of scatter around where the trees are. Because what I want to try and do is get this kind of built up into the corner. As 
as though the wind's you know blown it into the corner and and uh, banked it up. Right, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fix this down. And to do that I'm going to use the scenery glue that I made uh, quite a while ago. I'll have to make some more of this soon actually, I've used quite a lot of it. Um, I've got a video on how I made this, so I'll put a link to that. Uh, but basically I'm just going to put this all over now to kind of lock down what we've done so far. And then we'll come back and put some more on. So I'll just put this on with a pipette. Yeah, I like this uh, scenery glue. I made it, as I said, a while ago. Uh, and I used a recipe that from uh, a YouTube channel called Paper Cuts. I'll put a link below. Uh, the guy's an absolute master when it comes to scenery. Well worth a watch. You can spray it on, but I just find it's uh, a bit more precise like this. And it also doesn't go everywhere. Now the other thing I want to do while I'm putting this glue on. If you remember, our rocks were very mossy in the, in the reference picture. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to go back to our blended green and just put more on the rocks themselves. Because now they've got some glue on them, the moss will stick. Yeah, so as I say, it's uh, a question of just putting a little bit of glue on the rocks, sprinkling the moss on, quite heavy, um, and then very gently applying a few drops of glue just to uh, hold the moss in place. Uh, the problem is, of course, with the rocks is they're quite smooth and if you put the glue on too much it will just wash the moss straight off the top of the rock. So you need to be a little bit careful at this stage, otherwise you're just going to keep washing it away. Right, there we go for that. Now I think what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to put a little bit of moss along the tops of the walls. So I'll just put some glue on. Just sprinkle some of that along the top of the wall like that. Right, that doesn't look too bad. So here I'm applying uh, a few little scraps and fragments of our woodland scenics uh, green bushes, the dark green, medium green, whatever it was, bushes uh, around the edges of corners just to, to break up the outlines a little bit and give us a, another, another little bit of detail to look at. Right, I think that'll do for that. Let's see what else we can put on. So of course the other thing we'd go, go on is our ivy. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> I... Uh, I almost forgot about this ivy. I put it somewhere safe for it to dry and then nearly forgot I'd made it. Um, but anyway, a bit of Mod Podge behind it as before. And then what I'm doing is using a, a skewer, a bamboo skewer, uh, to push it into place. But I mean, you could use a paintbrush holder or anything really to, to do that. Right, that'll do for that. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue one end of it and then once that's dry I'll kind of drape it around a bit and then stick the other end down. Right, I think we really do need to leave this to dry now <laughs> before we do any more. We'll come back to this. Right, so this has had a chance to set up overnight and is all looking wonderful. So what we can do now is stick down the other end of the vines. Um, what I wanted to avoid doing was too much manipulation because I didn't want to sort of push one side down and have the other side spring up. Um, so, yeah, a bit more sticking down to do. Uh, I think this one I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, this one just needs a, a bit of glue just to hold it in place. It's, it's these two that are going to be tricky, I think. More this one. Right, so that's got that all pinned down, so we've just got to wait for that to dry a bit. Um, one thing I'm going to do now is deal with the chimney and the idea I had to do that I've got here a box of uh, static grass tufts that I bought from um, eBay uh, you can make these, they're not difficult to make but it is quite time consuming and sometimes it's easier just to 
you know, let someone else do it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of these tufts and put them inside the chimney to make it look like it's it's full of vegetation. So uh, these are these are nice ones actually because these are uh, self adhesive. So you just peel them off and stick them on. So I think these ones are the same kind of grass I've already used. So you just peel them off. And stick them down. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So now we'll just give this a bit longer to set up and then we'll put the trees in. Um, and I think we'll be almost done then. See, one more thing I'm going to do while I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm going to try a little experiment. What I'd like to do is get some moss in between these stones. So I think what I'm going to do is put some glue very carefully in the, in the gaps. and then put some of our woodland scenics flocking on. Doesn't look too bad. Let's try and get some on the sides as well. Should have done this before I put the uh, vines on, really, but <laughs> never mind. Right, and what I want to try and do is get some uh, in these little nooks and crannies here as well. It's looking pretty good. All right, let's see if we can get around the front as well. Be careful, I don't want to drop it. <laughs> It'll be a bit of a disaster at this point.
All right. That doesn't look too bad. Oh, everything's covered in flock and tea leaves. <laughs> okay, now for the fun bit. We need to get the trees in. Now this is the really fun one because I've got to try and manoeuvre this branch through and out of the door which was a lot easier when it didn't have all the foliage attached to it but uh, we got there in the end with only the minor loss of leaves all good all right that's one it might be easy to put some glue in there before we go any further with this Right, I need to find a way to prop this up now until it dries. Didn't really think this through, did I? <laughs> I'll find something to prop it up with. Right, so um, that's our trees glued in. Uh, I think we're just about done with this. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edge of the base here uh, with some... Uh, black acrylic this is just some stuff that came from um, uh, a DIY shop it's one of those um, tester pots so I use that just to go around the edge just because it's a bit grubby where I've been working on it uh, and I think after that we'll be pretty much finished so let's do that right so to put our uh, base pieces together I've got this uh, dowel um, to go in the holes to line them up. Uh, now these dowels are obviously designed to be like hammered in and I don't really want to do that. Uh, so I'm just going to sand this down a little bit so that it's uh, a slip fit rather than a hammer fit. So old nail file. Don't need to take a lot off, just a, a, a you know a hair off of each side. And it's so that it will just push into the hole rather than needing to be hammered in. So here's our lower base, let's just try that. That's more like it. Now we'll need to cut this down uh, because obviously I don't want it sticking up uh, too far through the base as it will hit the bottom of the uh, house. So I'll just cut this down and then we can put them together. Right, so I've just cut that down and sanded it down. We'll just pop that in there push it in like that and now we can take our house and we can drop that over the top like that you see there you go so that is basically this done now um, yeah, I think we're pretty much finished. Let's wrap this up. And here is the finished article. Uh, this was a, a fun little project, an interesting little diversion. Um, not really for any particular reason other than I had the little house and I felt like doing something with it. So we took our reference picture as a bit of inspiration. It's obviously not meant to be an exact copy. It was just a, to give an idea of it, a flavor. Um, and it's a good way of using up what otherwise would have ended up in the bin. Uh, we made some ivy, we made some trees, made some grass, uh, a few bushes. Um, we've got a nice little bit of mix of, of ground cover with our, our rocks and our moss and our grass and all the rest of it. Um, so yeah, just a good way of, of coming up with a, a nice little diorama uh, with not much effort. So uh, yeah, uh, hopefully this was of interest to some of you. Uh, Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again on the next one. Cheers. Bye.